Hi and welcome to George Wick Studio. I'm George and I'll be talking pre-carving from ideas to getting them into the wood. Next week I'll be talking carving woods, the week after carving tools, sharpening carving tools, and work positioners, selecting wood for carving, design and layout, types of carving, and then finally wood carving. So let's get started. Today's topic is carving ideas. You can get carving ideas from almost anywhere, from TV, books, people, your imagination, etc. There's tons of carving books out there with all kinds of patterns and stuff. I get this Chips and Chats book. It's got uh, all kinds of information in it. Different club contests, carving contests, and you know, there's stuff you can carve. They have patterns for different types of things. You know, they got uh, five carving tips. Number one is a sharp knife. Number two is practice. Three practice. Four practice. Five practice. Just like anything, practice makes perfect. And uh, as far as carving, though, um, once you decide what you want to carve, after you get a good idea, I mean, I like doing caricatures of people I know, and uh, there's usually stories that go behind that, but I won't get into that right now. Um, once you have an idea, though, of what you want to carve, there's uh, reference photos that you can find online, or um, what I usually do is get a... a human anatomy book or a horse anatomy book or some kind of anatomy book that shows you the correct proportions of, you know, the human anatomy. Um, faces are real hard to fake. I mean, if you do one wrong, one side of the face is bigger than the other side. People will notice because you look at faces every day. But other than that, I mean, once you learn your anatomy, then you can have fun with it and do caricatures and make them out of proportion you'll know what you're doing then, and uh, I'll kind of talk while I do a little carving, make some wood chips here, but uh, a good sharp knife is pretty handy, a lot of carvers I know get discouraged carving if it's real hard to carve, and uh, when your knife goes through it just like butter, it makes it a pleasure to carve. And once your tools are sharp on a stone, we'll get into tool sharpening in a later video, but I'll usually take a strop. This is a flex cut strop with some gold compound. And I'll put a little bit of the compound on the leather on the strop. And then just strop it. it keeps that blade polished up so it slides right through the wood nice and easy. And removes the burrs that you've created during the sharpening process. And every once in a while, just a few little licks on the strop will put you back into business. Unless you drop your tool, then you got to resharpen it, especially if you get a nick or gouge in it. It's a good idea to wear gloves. I carve a lot of times without a glove, but it's not setting a very good example not using a glove. You got a better chance of not getting cut as bad if you put your glove on ahead of time or put a band aid on before you get cut instead of afterwards. But, uh, there's uh, carving clubs you can join. There's a lot of good carvers in a lot of the carving clubs, and a lot of them are willing to teach and show you different things. I've learned a lot from a lot of other carvers along the way. I've carved for 49 years, so still learning everything I can. You know, every day I learn something new when it comes to carving. And eventually we'll work into some more advanced carving projects. But, uh, 
in the meantime I'd like to lay down the foundation you know and get everyone started on the right track when it comes to carving you don't have to have a lot of money to carve um, if you don't have a carving knife you can always make one there's a ton of YouTube videos out there I might even do one myself to show you how to make a carving knife out of an old saw blade or there's other ways you can make them too you can even buy the blades and put them in a handle epoxy them in but, uh, sure is cold here in Montana this time of year. I'm out here in my studio now. And just turned on the heat. I shut it off temporarily to make this video. Otherwise it'd be kind of noisy in here. But other than that, um, and some insulation probably go a long ways too. I'll get to her in the meantime. Work a full-time job during the day easy to get distracted to get out here and get to carving after work and next thing you know it's three o'clock in the morning you got to get up at five in the morning but uh, it definitely it's worth its weight in gold once you learn and know what you're doing I mean your carvings they you can save them and collect them and make collections of stuff or sell them give them away as presents a lot of things you can do i like to sell mine sometimes and replenish my carving tools you can never have too many carving tools except when you get too many tools then you got to keep them all sharp you can spend days sharpening tools unless you get a power sharpener that's not as bad but a lot of times when i'm carving off not start on one end and finish at the other I'll go all the way around the curve and try to keep it even if I take off a little bit from this side I'll swap to the next side and usually take a little bit off there but as I go kind of whittle away and talk as I go got 49 years worth of carving behind me to talk about and it'll take a ton of videos to even cover some of the basics I mean I mean one gouge can perform about six different functions a lot of times it's just a matter of knowing how to use them a lot of the books and stuff will show you some good tips and information but there's a lot of things that you know even some of the more experienced carvers don't even know must have been taught. I always try to keep both ears open while I'm around other carvers and let them do all the talking. If they have questions, I'll try to answer theirs too. But I like helping out other carvers. It's kind of nice seeing the light turn on in somebody's mind. I taught wood carving classes for a year down in Hamilton here in Montana it was a private school kindergarten through 12th grade and started out with the basics and then the time they were done at the end of the year they entered their wood carvings in the western Montana wood carver show and a lot of them got blue ribbons but we had lessons that I would teach them and uh, taught them how to observe what they're carving and uh, basically the topic today you know is you know your ideas and observation and reference materials and paying attention to what you're carving i'd take them outside and tell them to sketch something they wanted to carve and about five minutes into it i sent them back inside and they'd say whoa 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 wait a minute and we're not done and next time we went outside they made sure they had all the details and stuff that they wanted to put in their carvings they paid a little more attention to it then and it was just a learning process that they went through and you know all good carvers you know you start out trial and error and have 
safety people teach you. Next thing you know, you're getting better and better and better. And that's what it's all about is lots of practice. Just about anyone can carve with a natural skill set, motor skills. And uh, just a matter of practice and discipline. You know, once you learn the basics, then you can pretty much carve anything. I would say you don't have to be a genius to carve, but we like to let people think that. So as far as references, um, like I say, you can get your references just about anywhere. And then you want to do some sketches and then uh, turn your sketches into drawings once you figure out the size that you want to do your carving and I'll take a notebook and sketch things that I think of and last weekend I was playing around and sketched out this bow hunter I want to carve in a caricature made his hands a little bit bigger than normal and his head's a little bit bigger but that'll trim down I like to make things just a little bit bigger than the actual carving size that way I can take off what I need to with a knife and have a little extra. It's harder to put wood back on once you've taken it off. And once you get your sketch, you can use either graphite paper or you can even make graphite paper. Just take and take a pencil, lead, and darken the back of your sketch or your drawing like that darker the better actually works better to trace the graphite paper your own graphite paper with a ballpoint pen it comes out a little better but uh, well, we can go like that lay your drawing on your paper you can tape it on with that blue painters tape too but then you just trace out whatever you want to trace and then it'll transfer onto your carving but I always keep a pencil too while I'm doing my carving that way I can look at it and try to keep the center line drawn in and then once you got your pattern drawn out on your wood you can put it on a bandsaw and cut it out get rid of most of the waste wood and then go to town with the carbon knives and gouges. Or you can use a coping saw if you don't have a band saw. But other than that, I mean, shoot, there's patterns you can make. You can uh, trace your sketching and card drawing onto a piece of cardboard that thin cardboard about the size they use for cereal boxes I guess and uh, cut it out with some scissors or an exacto knife and then just trace that onto the wood if you want to make more of them you can even use real thin wood do the same make patterns and a lot of times you can make patterns of bodies you know that's a side view of my caricature bow hunter that I'm going to make and then if I want to change it I can make it a little bit bigger belly bigger butt longer legs or whatever I want to do to it and uh, it's good to keep a pencil handy though when you get the urge to start sketching next thing you know you'll be replicating your sketches into carvings and that's what it's all about um, if you got any questions of anything you want to know or that just be sure and leave a comment in the comment section. I'll try to answer it as quick as I can. I usually check it once a day or so, a couple times a day. Here pretty soon. And then, uh, as we progress, I got a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum wooden stock on it. I want to refinish and I want to probably carve some basket weave where the checkering is right now and then probably carve an elk into it and that'll be a 
tutorial that I'll go ahead and walk you through the process of that step by step. That might be a couple of videos in itself right there. But uh, I do carve doors and I'll show you how I do the design and layout on the doors. Um, it's not worth my time to make the door when there's manufacturers like Pine Door down in Derby that can make the door and they're already set up to do them. But uh, I like to spend more time carving and less time building when it comes to that kind of stuff. But if you haven't liked or subscribed, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to tag along on our next couple of videos and get lined out on some tips and curving ideas and different things. Libraries are good places too to get reference material. Magazines, a lot of times I'll cut out different things that I want to carve out of magazines. And then uh, I got file cabinets full of different carving patterns to sketches I've done over the years. And a lot of the carvings, I'll always save the design and drawings that I've made over the years. And, you know, if I want to get something similar to that, I don't usually make the same thing again, but, you know, I can use it as a guide and foundation to get going on it. Might change a few different things in it here and there, but There's tons and tons and tons of different things to learn about carving. You can make it as simple as hard as you want, you know. And once we get going, I mean, you'll see it's pretty fun and simple to knock out a carving in no time. You know, I, I can knock one out in my lunch hour sometimes if I want to. A lot of times I'll keep a carving knife in my truck and I'm up in the woods and I'm sitting there underneath a tree waiting on elk or something. I'll carve something in the meantime. It makes time go by pretty quick. Or sitting up in a tree stand, sitting up there whittling, having squirrels chatter at you. And then you get ideas on carving squirrels and sketch one out in your sketchbook that I usually carry. But we'll get into all that here a little later and... Uh, I think I'm going to get that heater back on and get some more carving done here tonight. And next week I'll post a video on wood selection and how to select your wood, different types of carving woods that there are, and good woods to carve and some not so good that you can carve. But we'll go after the good stuff from basswood to butternut, mahogany, even walnut's a hard wood, but it's fun to carve. I, I carve a lot of walnut. But we'll get into that next week. All right, take care. Bye now.